I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities in Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. A long, long, long time ago, in the late 90s, there was an album titled Emergency and I that came out. Kind of swept the indie scene and became this, uh, I, I, I don't know, it's kind of an underground hit, really. I, I would mean, say, yeah, it's a good I, way to I remember it. back in like the early 2000s when I was in high school listening to Emergency and I and really liking a lot of the <laughs> songs on it. It became, you know, one of just the albums of my youth, and um, while I wasn't really into Dismemberment Plan, the makers of the album, as a band, um, I, I really just loved that album. Mm -hmm. And when you become attached to an album, really, you, it becomes part of your musical identity. So it taught me things. The Dismemberment, ba the dismemberment Plan, the Dismemberment Band, the Dismemberment <laughs> Plan, um, they're an indie rock band. They're indie rock in the truest sense of indie rock. Mm -hmm. They're all about crafting songs with really good songwriting, with cool ideas, and focus, not necessarily the best of any category. Their instrumentation may not be mind blowing. The vocalist, uh, Matt, uh, what you, Travis, Morrison. Travis Morrison, uh, Travis Van Morrison, <laughs> is, isn't the best vocalist you've ever heard, but he has just an iconic voice and his lyricism is top notch. That's what this band is all about is that ly lyricism with witty lyrics mm -hmm. um, that kind of play at the songs and make you think. And it brings you into the music and it makes you think about how the songs are constructed and what they're doing and the hooks that they're comprising and things like that. That shaped me and really mm -hmm. shaped the music that I was into at the time. Now, the band disbanded in 2003. Mm -hmm. After three albums, um, a little bit of success, they disbanded. They broke up. They and dismembered. Then they dismembered. They followed through with their they, plan. They, that, that, <laughs> wow. Boy, that's fortuitous. <laughs> you know, and then ten years later, they come out with another album, Uncanny mm -hmm. Valley, Valley, which we will review for you today. But, you know, after a, a decade off of writing mm -hmm. music, I mean, that is just an insane amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, like MBV, almost. <laughs> not, not quite that. <laughs> yeah, like half that. Still, this, still. Is, this is the year for comeback albums, so yeah, it was it really is. cool to see Dismemberment playing come back. Tom, what was the, your take on Uncanny Valley's sound? How did this album grip you? Well, it's, you know, this general sound palette is somewhat similar to what I've heard them do in the past. Yes. You know, you, you definitely have a focus on the vocals. You mentioned those kind of cheeky lyrics. And, the, and they're presented in, in almost kind of a spoken word mm -hmm. kind of way. I mean, Travis Morrison really comes off as just like your, your indie rock everyman. Yeah, you know, he could, he could be your next door neighbor. And it just seems like a guy you could just go have a conversation with. But from there, you have very upbeat instrumentals generally. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this this band isn't really about making a dark mood. That's not the point at all. It's just to rock out and to have fun, but at the same time to make you think. It's not mindless at all. And the way that they work the instrumentals together uh, is really a testament to that because you have, you know, some, some well-moving guitar, mm -hmm. particularly the bass. I love the bass lines that yes. they come up with. And you've also got some nice sounding kind of synth in there. It's been a signature of their sound. Um, they, they make a point to not sound too lofty, yes. to, to sound accessible. I actually read that there was a track on Emergency and I that they were going to use real strings on and then decided to just use like Casio keyboard string sounds because they thought that it sounded too... Uh, you know, high and mighty to use real strings or something. I think I think that's kind of funny. That's you know, it's, yeah, it's not something that maybe like I would choose to do in my music, but I'm also going for something different. I think it makes sense for these guys. They have uh, the point is that they have a very apt knowledge of what they're going for stylistically, and they achieve it. And I think that they continue that on Uncanny Valley, and they do a good job of making the songwriting back that up and justify it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and and really, I mean, just from the moment this album kicks in with no one saying nothing, mm -hmm. the the hooks on this album, I just thought, were so mm -hmm. fun and gripping that it was it's impossible not to fall in love with at least some of these tracks. I'm not saying you're going to love this album in its entirety, but at least some of these tracks, I guarantee you, if you like indie rock music mm -hmm. that plays with your mind a little bit, you're going to like at least a few of these tracks. The first two, No One Saying Nothing and Waiting, both just had these choruses that got me. And the thing about Dismemberment playing songwriting has always not, they, they've always not been afraid to tackle a song structure that change a little bit. They don't follow a formula. They're willing to add things, as Tom said, just you know, to shape their music in a way that makes it interesting, and they and they follow through with that here. Um, later on in the album, they get into a little bit heavier 
of subject matter. Track seven, uh, Daddy Was a Real Good Dancer. I mean, that song tells this just kind of epic story, um, you know, and, and I really got into the lyrics, and I'll let you guys yeah. do that on your own, but that was a very well-written song, probably, and it, and it caught me off guard. It's not one of the flashier tracks on this album, but the more that I listened to it, the more that I realized that this song was just one of the better written tracks I've heard um, uh, from Dismemberment Plan, but in, in the rock in general. Mm -hmm. um, track eight, Mexico City Christmas. Another I love very that good track. track. Yeah, um, that was my it, highlight. Very, for sure. very colorful. Lots of mm -hmm. um, melodies going on. It's, it's probably the densest song on the album. Yeah. Um, but uh, one lyric that I want to point out, since we're talking about lyrics so much, is um, in track six, "Looking." Um, he one the lyrics, which is this is a bit more of a ballad. It's probably the closest yeah. thing to a ballad yeah. on the album. Uh, the lyric is, "Once he wanted to paint her naked, now he only wants to paint her." How just says a lot. Provocative yeah. is that? I mean, that that is. A genius lyricism at its best. And there's lyrics, there's gems like that all over this album, and it's something that if you appreciate that sort of lyricism, that, that witty um, touch to the song, I mean, it's something that you can really dive into. Um, I don't really have a lot else to say about this other than I really feel like the smorgasbord of sound that they mm -hmm. went for is exactly what they delivered on. This album yeah. doesn't have a ton, of, it's it's not the, the most ambitious release mm -hmm. you've ever heard, but they just do, they set up, they said they wanted to make an eclectic sounding album that with a lot of interesting songwriting and good lyricism and good hooks, um, and they did that. This isn't a, a, like a fantastic album listen as far as like conceptuality is concerned, as far as you know theming or motifs are concerned. Mm -hmm. It's just well-written music, and that's something that we have to give props to. Yeah. What are you giving this, Tom? 80. I'm with you. 80. All right. This is an 80, which means it's a must-listen album. You guys should definitely go out and check the return album from Dismemberment Plan, Uncanny Valley. And when you do, leave us a comment at www.velocitiesofmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesofmusic. Let us know what you guys' experience were with this and what were your favorite songs from old Dismemberment Plan back in the day. Also, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave us a comment or a note saying what albums you'd like to see us review on this channel. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward. What did you say?